This video is sponsored by Synology and the product I want to recommend is the Disk Station which is a network attached storage device. You can use it for storing files, streaming media and much more. But what I really want to mention is the idea of using it as a development box like I do. You can install software like Apache servers, Git, Docker, content management systems like Drupal and WordPress and much more. As you can see the DSM software is just amazing. There's different Disk Station models that can hold different storage amounts and they range in price. So I'll put a link in the description to the DS918 Plus, which is what I use, but I'll also put some others as well. So check out the links in the description below. Hey, what's going on, guys? In this video, I want to look at 10 bad habits to avoid as a developer. And, and these are things that I've dealt with myself, and I've also seen many, many other developers deal with. So my hope for this video is that if you're just starting out, you can avoid developing these habits and if you are uh, already a seasoned developer and you have some of these habits that you can at least be aware of it and try to work on them okay so number one is not taking enough breaks and I know that most of us are guilty of this uh, especially if you're a hard worker but sometimes you can overwork yourself and be actually be less productive so I've had periods of time where I've sat down around 6 a.m. and maybe got up a couple times for for lunch and just to go to the bathroom and work straight up until nighttime you know six seven at night and that was that was common almost every day and I think we've all done some ridiculous hours when we had a time crunch and something was due maybe the next day that's kind of a rare occasion and that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking more about your everyday habits okay so each day I, I would really suggest trying and take trying try to take frequent breaks I can't say a specific plan for everyone because everyone's different but in a general sense I'd say around every hour or so just get up stretch your legs walk around get a coffee get something to eat uh, a lot of times if you're stuck on something and you you take a little break and you come back to it the solution will come to you easier after you give your brain a little rest so just try and, and, and figure out what works for you and even if you don't think you need to take breaks just try it out you might find that that you're more productive and you can think a little a little clearer so number two is refusing to ask for help number two applies to both learning learning if you're in college or boot camp it also applies in the actual workplace and many of us don't ask for help for various reasons I think a big reason is pride and just the fear of looking like you don't know what you're doing many of us have imposter syndrome where we don't feel fully qualified for our positions uh, I know that I felt like this in both a company setting and dealing directly with clients and even doing courses and tutorials I have I felt like this so asking for help it, it kind of reaffirms that that insecure feeling and I think that's why a lot of us don't do it but in reality it's wasting a lot of your time and it's hindering your growth uh, having other real developers around you to answer questions is just as much or, or even a, a better resource than having a tutorial or a video or a book um, they can directly answer your questions and really help you understand it. And the only people that would criticize you for asking for help uh, would be complete assholes. And I, I try to uh, avoid those people anyway. So don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. So number three is uh, when we stop being a student. And I don't care if you've been a senior developer for 20 years, you should always think of yourself as a student. More, more, more so than other professions because this one is always changing. There's no developer that knows everything about anything. And even if you get to the point where you do, something's going to change the next day and you're, you're, you're no longer going to know everything about that particular topic. Um, if you get complacent and you stop reading and learning, you'll fall behind. And even if you have a job that doesn't require you to learn anything new, like let's say you build the same type of projects with the same software, the same version and all that stuff. Um, if you lose that job one day, which is very, very possible, you're going to be way behind. So even with a job like that, which is it's not really it's not really a great place to work if you're always doing the same exact thing but if you do work somewhere like that I'd still suggest learning new stuff on the side just to stay up to date with you know whatever language or frameworks or libraries that you're into and that you work with 
Um, there's a lot of jobs, like I just explained, and it, it's understandable because many team leaders, um, they just figure that if, it, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So you'll see teams using outdated and unsupported technologies just because it seems to be working and why, why take the time to learn new stuff. Uh, but if you're learning new stuff on the side and you can show your team that it's possible to to make your projects faster and more efficient and easier, you may be able to sway them into actually updating their technology and just bettering the company overall. And I, I, the only time I wouldn't suggest doing that is if you have a really closed-minded, arrogant boss that, um, that doesn't like to get suggestions from people that are, you know, quote unquote, below him, uh, which really sucks to, to work in an environment like that. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. So number four is more of a technical habit, and that's writing dirty code. And this could be a lot of things. You want to write your code in a way that's visually clean, efficient, and secure. Okay, those are, are three very important things when writing code in any language, in any framework. Um, this is really hard when you're self-taught because a lot of the times in tutorials and courses, you're not learning the, the absolute best way to do something because the instructor is trying to make it easy for you to understand the core concept okay so you might have to do some extra research and figure out the best way possible to clean up your code I would definitely suggest always using the dry principle which is uh, don't repeat yourself so if you see common blocks of code create some kind of class or function to um, consolidate that piece of functionality rather than just repeating it it makes it much cleaner it saves a bunch of lines um, it's also much easier for other developers to work with you also want to pay attention to performance. You want to do things like compress your images, minify your JavaScript and CSS. You can use a task runner like Gulp. Or, there's, there's many tools that will allow you to do this stuff automatically in your workflow. And even if it's a small project, you, can, you could even do it manually with something like minifier.org. Um, there's a lot of tools out there. Also, don't make unnecessary API calls. Structure your full stack application in a way where you can make as little requests to the server as possible and still get the functionality that you need. Um, also, testing. This is one thing where this is one uh, bad habit that that I'm a huge culprit of. I, I don't do enough testing as much as I know things like unit testing it helps build a more robust app and it saves you on potent future issues potential future issues i just freaking hate it um it's it's probably one of my worst habits and it's something that i really need to work on to become a better developer um, sometimes people cut corners to save time but in reality we're making the application less performant less efficient less readable and it will probably cause more of a headache in the future than if you just took the time to do it the right way to begin with so just try and keep that in mind and these are just some examples of of bad practices there's there's a lot <laughs> and it can be kind of tough sometimes to really just you know keep your code clean and and uh performant and efficient not to mention secure so number five is something that most of us deal with especially if we have families at home and that's having a bad work-life balance so being a programmer of any any kind it takes up loads of time and there's a lot of reasons for that things are always changing so we're constantly having to learn more which takes up time um, we run into issues that can hold us up where we have to do debugging and testing. And I've actually had periods of time where I would complain to my wife about not getting things done. And she'd be completely flabbergasted and, and say, you know, you just worked three 10 hour days straight. How did you not get anything done? And she just doesn't understand that when you run into issues, you're not being productive. You know, you're spending uh, all these hours working, physically working, but nothing is being added to the project. You know, you're not moving any further along. Um, so that's something you have to deal with. Uh, and, and for those of you that, that freelance or if you have your own business and you're not working for a company that's paying you, you, you get paid by your clients, you know that you can't just go three days without being productive and not have it severely affect your livelihood. Um, so I, I, I really empathize with uh, freelancers and, and people that work for themselves because everything falls on your shoulders, you know. Um, not to say that, that you don't get that same feeling working on a team for a company, but I don't think that it's as stressful uh, as it is working for yourself. 
So also you want to try to do things that make you happy. I'm sure m- most of you guys have hobbies that have nothing to do with coding that you'd like to do. Uh, but a lot of time work gets in the way and you want to try to make time for, for those hobbies. You know, you don't want to be on your deathbed and and just have memories of, of writing lines of code. You know, you want to spend time with your loved ones. You want to, you know, if you play sports or you like to friggin skydive, whatever it may be. You know, you want to you want to make sure you make time for that stuff. Live a, a well-balanced life. So number six is bad office politics. Uh, I don't know if that's a, a really good title for what I'm talking about here. But basically, when you work on a team at a company, you work with other people and, and sometimes conflict can arise. You can have disagreements, arguments and so on. Um, there's a lot of developers that are really arrogant and always want to be right. And even if they they know they made a mistake and they're wrong, some would never admit it. Uh, I'm not saying that's most developers, but I think we've all met at least one of these guys. And I hear from a lot of people that their team is great and they all get along and, and that's awesome. That's how it should be. But unfortunately, that's not always the case. Sometimes you're going to clash uh, with other developers on ideas and solutions and code. Uh, but try to be diplomatic and respectful. But at the same time, don't be a pushover, you know, especially if you feel strongly about whatever it is you're proposing Um, and and try not to resort to yelling, name calling, any of that. It's not going to get you anywhere. If they start doing it, just just walk away and be the bigger person. Uh, Unfortunately, if you have someone on your team that's just a complete dick and won't listen to reason, there's really nothing you can do aside from trying to avoid them. I mean, you could go to your manager, but I'd I'd only suggest that if it's a, a really you know, a major problem in in preventing you from getting your work done. And that's just my way of thinking. I was brought up to to deal with the person that was giving me problems, not just go tell on them. And I'm not saying that that's that's how you should be. And that's my advice. That's just me personally. And it's it's just something that's kind of ingrained in me. But if they are affecting you uh, where you can't get your work done, where it's it's severely impacting your work, then it may be necessary to bring it up to a manager or someone higher up. All right. So number seven is not learning from your mistakes. So being a developer, you're going to make a ton of mistakes. It's just inevitable. And there's nothing wrong with that. There is a problem if you keep making the same mistakes over and over again and you don't learn from them. So the basic process I would suggest when you make a mistake is to figure out what the ultimate cause of the mistake was. Uh, figure out if there can be a process put in place to prevent it from happening again and then figure out if the mistake had been found sooner could could you have prevented the consequences and if you think about these three things when you make a fairly big mistake chances are it won't happen again or at least you'll catch it sooner also don't be too hard on yourself for making mistakes it happens to the best of us Uh, I've made some some pretty bad mistakes in my career but I think the, the bigger ones I, I, I've learned from and I haven't repeated again. All right, so number eight is giving up too soon. Uh, and frustration is a huge part of programming. I've made a couple videos on getting frustrated, dealing with some of the issues that arise in programming. And I've seen many people give up too soon in, in both specific projects and just in general in, in, as programming as a profession due to having so much frustration with it. Um, Some projects can be really difficult and it seems like once you fix one thing another thing breaks You know, you may start to think you're in over your head or you could be doing something else You're losing money and and many other negative thoughts But if you give up too soon and you scrap the project or even worse quit your job um, Then everything that you put into that project or that job was for nothing and I'm, I'm not saying that there aren't projects that shouldn't be given up on but I've seen it many times where the people they've given up um, and from an outsider's point of view I could tell that if they just stuck with it a little longer it probably would have been successful but they let that frustration really get to them and they just said screw it so before you give up anything just make sure you've exhausted all routes you've searched up and down asked for help start you know um, started trying to try something different maybe use a different technology Um, Taking a long break and getting your thoughts in order can help sometimes. 
uh, like we talked about in the beginning, maybe even putting it aside for a bit if possible. You want to just do absolutely everything you can before quitting. Uh, if you're st- if you're still failing, then maybe it is time to move on, but just make sure all avenues are taken uh, before that happens. And because success could be right around the corner and it would be a shame if you just gave up before the last turn. All right, number nine is being a know-it-all. So I talked a little bit about arrogant developers earlier. I think what makes many of them arrogant is that they they think they know it all and they don't listen to other developers because why would they? They already know and, and have all the answers. And being this way sucks for the people that are around you. It also hurts yourself because if you think you know it all, you're not actively learning more and bettering yourself. And I guarantee that you're going to have a horrible wake up call someday when something goes really wrong because you failed to listen to anyone else and or, or do research. I think that if if these types of developers were more open minded and they welcomed the ideas of others and respected others, they would also find themselves much happier um, than just always trying to be right. Uh, they could be the smartest person on a team, but also the worst person on the team because nobody wants to work with them and there's there's no good communication going on. For a team to be successful, there needs to be communication and there needs to be unity and uh, being a know-it-all, it just destroys that. So if this is you, try and um, you know take the stick out of your ass and, and be more open-minded and, and respectful and it'll take you a lot further in life. So number 10 uh, kind of relates to number nine, and this is not being able to take constructive criticism. And there's a big difference between the know-it-all troll type of developer that I was just talking about and someone that's genuinely trying to help you out. And it, like it's, it's hard to see the difference sometimes because having something pointed out to you that you did wrong or you could have done better, it doesn't feel good. Even if the person's completely respectful, it still doesn't feel good. And, and you can make yourself think it's an, it's an attack on you. Um, but a lot of the time it's not. It's just someone that's showing you a better way or just sharing an opinion. And it took me a while as a content creator to figure that out, uh, to figure the difference out of, of who's trolling and who's just trying to help. At first, I found myself being very defensive to anyone that said anything about how I did something, how I wrote my code. But then I realized that many of these people are legit- legitimately um, just trying to help. And if they aren't being disrespectful or they're not being really nitpicky over something that doesn't really matter, that's really just preference, then I need to take that as something that can really benefit me and benefit my knowledge on whatever it is. I think constructive criticism is is a fantastic resource for learning and the reason for that is because it's very targeted towards you in, in helping, helping you with something that you're having issues with. Um, I think that's invaluable. In fact, code reviews and stuff like that, they're great because you get other people's suggestions and influence on your programming and how you can improve it and better yourself. So don't take things too personal uh, unless you're actually being attacked or, or intentionally made fun of and disrespected. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to hear that you're wrong or you could do something better, but ultimately it's going to make you a better developer. Okay, as long as those, like I said, as long as those people aren't just being asshole trolls. All right, guys, so that's it. That's my 10 bad habits that you should try to avoid. Uh, of course, there's much more than that. There's, there's hundreds of bad habits, uh, but these are just some of the ones that I have experience with and that I've seen over and over. So whether you're a new developer or someone that's been doing this for a long time, try to avoid falling into these, these, um, these traps and that's it thanks for watching if you can follow me on social media i would highly appreciate that leave a like if you like the video and i'll see you next time thanks guys